Hi, welcome to my studio. Eva Nichols here. I am having a little playtime in the studio and I am prepping some colors that I want to use and I'll have a list of the colors below if you want to check. And then I am using my one and a half inch flat um, wash brush and putting water on and putting some paint on and um, just uh, having fun. My, my inspiration is winter landscapes. But other than that, I'm going to keep it quite loose and quite abstracted and just do a fast and furious painting, looking at uh, what happens on the paper and going from there. So this is a really fun method. And um, I am using my colors and water and salt. Those are like the materials and then um, my my pieces of paper here are four by six and then I have used a three-quarter inch uh, masking tape to mask out um, a mat or a border around them and I'm just going to let you watch for a little bit I put some music on and I hope this inspires you to get uh, creating in your studio too So here you can see I've prepared a couple of uh, little uh, beginnings of landscapes and now I go in with my rigger brush and some very dark paint, um, indigo and uh, maybe some French ultramarine blue and some of the greens 
and uh, I start uh, creating some tree shapes. While it's still uh, a little bit damp, so you can see the colors are flowing out a little bit, and I'm just kind of dancing my rigger brush across the paper, and I'm using my little uh, spray bottle. Um, I'm using the dot bottle, the one that gives like a little bit um, coarser dots of water. Um, if you don't have a bottle like that, you can always uh, use a uh, brush that has kind of floppy um, uh, hairs and uh, splatter on a little bit of paint. It's, it's not quite as easy to control, but it's possible. And so I'm just um, seeing what happens on the paper and um, reacting to it dabbing out a little bit if I feel it gets too much and um, this is a lot about just uh, having fun and just uh, see what happens on the paper. Don't be uh, too um, uh, determined on what it has to be at this point. Just uh, have fun and um, add color to it, dab it out. You can also throw some more salt in if you uh, want to get a little bit more salt tex texture or in here. You can see I'm grabbing one of my uh, uh, credit cards and I'm scraping uh, some texture across that kind of looks like uh, rocks and hills and uh, then I go back in and uh, fix some of the tree shapes. As uh, my paint start, uh, is drying on the paper um, those tree shapes they start holding their shape a lot better and here you can see I'm actually scraping out some uh, trunks that I can use and um, just uh, continuing making the shapes look like something. And um, again, that's the rigger brush I use for this. It's, it's really a good brush for that because it'll hold quite a bit of uh, pigment and, um, and um, it still has a very fine point. And what you have to remember is the wetter your paper is, the more the colors will flow out and uh, the same applies to if you have your brush really, really wet. Um, it's also going to flow out more. So you want to have pretty um, thick paint on your rigger brush for these um, trees that I'm doing here. And you also have to wait a little bit for the, um, for the uh, water to dry on the paper uh, before you start doing uh, these tree shapes. Otherwise, uh, everything's just going to flow out and it's going to get to be... Uh, a big mess. And uh, now I'm just, uh, you know, flicking in some little, you know, grasses or weeds or whatever. And um, now I'm throwing a little bit of salt on those trees that I um, just uh, painted in. And there you can see. And then I'm just going to let it dry and see what happens. And on to the next one. And on this one you could see that uh, I had a little bit of that salt texture going on. Um, and now I'm going to go in and do the exact same thing um, using my uh, my indigo and I think I put a little bit of um, maybe yellow in it and a few of the other blue colors just to get a bluish green. I usually like to have my tree color for this kind of uh, landscape more on the blue side. You know, I think uh, for me anyway, when I look at the evergreens, I find that they look more bluish. Don't don't make them like bright spring green. That doesn't really read right, if you want to say it's a winter scene. So uh, you can see here, so same idea, dancing the brush across, and just looking at my silhouettes and my shapes. And then I go in and I scrape out a little bit with my credit card, and uh, that creates a little hillside there. And um, then I will um, continue and I'm mixing myself a little bit of a different color. Now I'm going more into the purpley because I, I'm thinking maybe I want to have this little hill of trees behind the first one I painted and see I spray in again. If it's too dry I just spray in a little bit of water so I get a little bit of that running effect. You have to remember that um, if you have like soft lines and soft edges that indicates that things are further away and you also want them a little bit paler and bluer. And when things are more in the foreground, you can have more hard edges and, um, and uh, more um, warm or bright colors. Um, and then if it gets too dark, you know, in the background there, I just uh, used my little 
Kleenex and uh, lift it out and then I'm scraping in um, some texture and some hillsides there in the, in the hill that was behind. And now I'm going in to kind of separate the foreground a little bit and make that um, hill behind it just a slight bit um, darker so that it pushes it back. And um, you know, I'm always looking at what's happening and deciding what do I need to do? Is it done? What else can I do? So um, I just let each individual painting speak for itself and let me know what it needs. So here I decided it needed a tree in the foreground that can overlap. Those trees are painted in the background. So, you know, you have to wait until those are um, at least semi-dry so everything doesn't flow together. And then to make it look like it's in front, first of all, it overlaps. Second of all, it's bigger. And third of all, it's um, darker and I have more hard edges. That's how you make something look um, closer to you. So it's all about uh, creating those uh, different uh, levels and layers in your painting. And then again, good old salt, throw some on. And um, I'll let that dry and then, you know, probably going to go in and fix it again to just finalize it later on. Uh, and there's one that's, you know, I had started, I think last time I had to play time with myself in the studio and uh, now I'm going to try and see if I can finish it. And I had um, painted around those shapes you can see there, um, those light shapes. That was some uh, really pronounced salt action that I had gotten in that painting and I thought I wanted to save some of that if I could. So we'll see how I come along here. And I'll put a little music on again, and um, I'm hoping that you're painting along, or getting uh, ideas at least.
So you can see I'm still working on this little painting and I've created several layers, um, foreground, middle ground and background and uh, now I'm pretty much ready to call it a day and I'm going to revisit uh, one of the other ones you saw me paint earlier. That front tree needs a little help I think. Yeah, let's just darken it up because it needed to be darker than those trees in the background, remember? And then um, there was uh, there was a, a, a little uh, shape that needed to be fixed, a little part of the shape that needed to be fixed, and just uh, give it a little bit more oomph. And um, again, just using my wigger brush, a little bit thicker paint, and um, making sure that the shape of the tree reads right in here. I'm giving it a little companion or a couple of them and uh, I just uh, keep looking at what I have going on in my little paintings and you know if I think it reads right I stop and if I think uh, something's still amiss I try to bring it in and you know the worst that can happen in these little paintings is that if you don't like it you can just toss it or paint on the other side if it's clean um, and here I'm giving uh, some little textures uh, in that other corner because I felt there was you know, too much of a space there with, where nothing was happening. Uh, so just to uh, create a little balance. And it really doesn't take much um, to make that happen. And so here I'm just cleaning up some of the edges. There you can see it. And on to uh, the next one. This is um, a portrait formula of a portrait format, I should say, um, that, and there you can see I got really good salt action in this particular one. And I'm just starting up out with um, putting a little bit of a dark bluish greenish color down to kind of indicate a hillside. And then in with the credit card, scrape out some texture and some rocks maybe sticking up. And um, that's a good beginning. Give it a little spray so that things will flow. I don't want everything to be too hard-edged um, uh, to start out with here as I'm building this uh, little landscape. And um, putting in some evergreens, as you can see, that's a theme of mine, but you know, I'm painting the um, winter landscape inspired by where I live, which is up in uh, the high shares in uh, Truckee, California. And, um, you know, I think we all get inspired by where we live, so that's uh, the theme of a lot of my paintings, the share landscape. So I'll continue um, painting this little painting, and I'll put some more music on, and uh, enjoy.
So you can see in this painting I'm trying a little bit of a different approach. I um, left a dry area uh, in the upper one third of my painting um, uh, in a shape of a mountain range because I wanted to try and uh, keep a light mountain range in this particular one. Um, and uh, I always uh, wipe off the edges uh, just so I don't get any um, seepage that goes in. And uh, here I'm putting on some salt and uh, scraping out a foreground. And so you can see there's already kind of like um, the beginning of a Lake Tahoe landscape with the lake, mountain range on the other side, and a foreground. And I'm just kind of using gravity to uh, move the paint around a little bit. And uh, getting a start on another painting here where I decided to use a different um, approach and some different colors. Now I've been painting so much with the blue, so now I thought it was time for a change. And I am going to paint um, more of a sunset or sunrise uh, background using um, yellow. Um, I'm using my transparent yellow. Uh, you'll see that in a moment. And right now I'm just wiping down the edges. I do that so that I don't get any bleed back. And uh, sometimes, you know, if you leave that moisture on the uh, on the uh, edges there, it'll creep in and then create a bloom on, on the edges. So I used yellow. Not quite sure if it was a transparent yellow, it might have been quinacridone gold. Doesn't really matter. A yellow or an orange, and now I'm using a red, um, probably quinacridone red. And then here I am using uh, the blue to put around on the outside. So I'm having the red as a border between the yellow and the blue because I don't want the blue and the yellow to meet if I can help it because you know they create green. And if I'm thinking of a sky, um, at sunset, uh, sunset or sunrise, you know, green is not really what I want. I want yellows and oranges and purples. So, and then I use my mister bottle and I spray from the middle out, and you can see um, I let it run out to the edge, and then I have my Kleenex that can pick up that dirty bead of color that you know will form once all three colors meet out there. I don't want that dirt to run back in again because then it's going to get all muddy. And that's not what I'm after. I am, I'm after light in the middle, in the center, not center, but you know, wherever my center of interest is going to be, it's going to be where the light is. So from the middle out, and then have gravity help you a little bit, move the colors out, get rid of that dirty bead. This is a really, really good practice and for if you want to do like a larger painting, to so kind of get the feel for how uh, to create this very beautiful glowy sky or background. That's a technique that I learned, well, I learned it from Nita Engler way back when, and I just, uh, this past fall, took a fabulous workshop from Carlin Holman, and, uh, and we did um, this technique with Carlin also. So uh, it's, it's a technique that I have used in the past too, and I really love it. And this time I'm going to throw a little bit of salt in, since I'm still thinking winter, snowy, frosty scenes. And, uh, you know, when you put the salt on, it's best that you don't put it on with it. It's like dripping when your paper's dripping wet. But uh, give it a little chance to uh, sink in. And here's that other painting that I had started uh, before I did uh, the glowy skies, where I had left... A white area for that mountain range and now I'm just uh, painting it a little bit of color at the bottom of the mountain range so that it's just the tops are lighter and uh, dabbing out a little bit with my tissue and then it has to dry and there's the other one I did the portrait formula where I painted in some of the trees and now I'm kind of debating what to do and I think I have decided that uh, all it needs is a moon so I'm taking my template um, of circles and finding a circle that I like that fits in the size and then I'm just using some of my masking tape to um, mask up some of those uh, other 
um, circle shapes uh, nearby, and I'm using my my Mr. Clean Magic Eraser, and I make sure that I get most all of the water out, and then I just gently scrub inside, lifting out a moon using my Kleenex to dab off, and then there you have it. There is a moon. Super easy, and then that way I feel that that kind of um, completes that painting. I don't know if I. Uh, oh yeah, so I I also use my I, my gel pen. That is my Uniball Signo white gel pen, and I'm putting just a little bit of snow on top of some of those branches, especially on that front bigger tree, and just a little on the top of a few of these rocks that are sticking up. And um, you know that way there's a little bit more sparkle in that painting. And a little bit on the other side, and that's that. And then here you can see I carefully um, remove the masking tape from the painting. And make sure that you don't rip the paper um, when you do this. So careful. And just from the inside out, don't rip from the from the outside in because that's where sometimes it will catch uh, the edge of the paper and rip it. And you can see how cute that looks once you have that little mat around. And there's a painting. And um, then here I'm going back to that one with the uh, white mountain range. Just uh, make sure you always get the salt off. So I either you know wipe it off with my hands, or if it's kind of stuck, I use a credit card to just kind of scrape it off. But you don't want to let that salt be on there. And now I'm trying to do a little dry brushing on those mountains, um, so it looks like some of the rocks are sticking out, you know, through the snow. And uh, I do that with a dry, almost completely dry brush and thick paint. And then I just barely, barely touch the paper, and I let that uh, brush kind of skip across the bumps in the paper. I'm painting on cold pressed. Arches watercolor paper, which has some little bumps. And then I'm going in and um, fine tuning some of those edges. Sorry about my head there in the picture. Um, with um, my white gel pen, which kind of indicates some of that snow, make it a little brighter, and uh, cleaning up some of the edges. And uh, now it's time to um, put some trees in the foreground. We need something dark, and we need something a little bit more defined, and we need something to tie all three areas together. We have the foreground of those rocks and you know the land, uh, and then we have the lake, and then we have the mountain range and the sky in the background. So we need something that kind of overlaps and connects those spaces to, uh, to complete this painting. So again, rigor brush, dark paint, just use my blues and, and uh, doctor them up with a little bit of yellow or a little bit of red if I want them more in the purpley uh, realm. So just nice rich darks. And then all you have to really be um, uh, paying attention to is the shape, the outside shape. And make sure you don't have uh, trees that are just like a trunk and then the, the, the branches are kind of stuck on on either side. The, you've got to cover up that uh, trunk uh, in some areas to make it look realistic. And uh, then I'm uh, using a little brush to just kind of fade out and soften the edge at the bottom of the tree so it doesn't look like it's like stuck on. And it can also, you know, look like there's a little bit of a shadow cast by the tree, which there would be. So you can see how that already helps. Now the, the landscape is kind of connected. But um, if I left it just like that, it would be out of balance. So I need to have something to balance it on the other side. And here I'm spraying in a little bit of water because I don't want the edges to be too hard and I want the um, color to flow out a little bit more so it's not quite as dark as that foreground tree. And uh, you always want to make um, the trees varied. Don't have them all the same um, size and the same distance and exactly the same color and stuff. It's harder than one should think. 
but um, it makes a huge difference. And also, you don't want to let any of the trees stop right at the uh, uh, at a line where the mountain ends or where the water ends, because those are called tangent lines, and they're just unpleasant to look at. You don't like those tangent lines; it kind of creates tension. So, unless you want to upset your viewers, don't do that. And then again, I dab it out a little bit because you know I want to say that these are a little bit further away. So they're not quite as dark as that tree in the foreground. And then spray in a little bit more water, dab in a little bit more, some little scribblies here and there. And uh, pretty soon, I'm going to call that day. You don't want to overwork these little things. And just enough information and to, uh, to tell the viewer what they're looking at, but, you know, let them let them have an opportunity to make out some things themselves too. That's really a good idea when you paint. Leave a little to your viewers' imagination. But we'll pick off the sides here too so you can see. That's always that's a really the fun part of it because um, um, that really uh, it's like when you put a mat on a painting. And here I decided that I needed a little bit of snow on those branches, so I'm going back to my trusted Uniball Signo white gel pen and just uh, putting a little white sparkle in and uh, just found a couple of places where I needed a little bit more and uh, then it's time to reveal. And here you can see what it looks like and what a difference it makes when you pick those tapes, those mas that masking tape off and reveal those nice crisp edges. And then uh, I have um, some uh, reclaimed barn wood, very rustic frames that I plop these little paintings in and uh, they look really cute that way. So here you can see, I'm zooming in so you can see it, get a better look. And so you can see the salt action, you can see my scraping, and you can see the white gel pen. Um, and it's a fun little winter scene. And finally, I just took a picture of that. So uh, one of the landscapes I did with that glowy background where I sprayed out from the middle and out. So I hope you try some of these methods and have a lot of fun and happy painting and see you soon.